Hello everyone, Jonathan here, and let's start get start getting started on adding movement to our snake game, giving the snake some life. So first things first, I'm going to just rename this snake head and press enter so it saves and it's not labeled textures 2 or whatever. Now the way we make the snake move is by programming, and in this case we're going to be programming in the language C sharp. So to start with, we're going to go here to add component, and we're going to type the name of a script we want to give it. And we can call it whatever we want, but we want to call it something that's relevant to the object we're working with. So in this case, I'm just going to call it head. Press enter and press create and add. And that automatically attaches a script. Now, the one thing I am going to do as well is I'm going to create, go back to the main assets folder, go create, make another folder, three scripts, and just drag and drop that script inside of it to keep things tidy. Now, if I double click on head over here, it's gonna open up MonoDevelop, which is the program I'm using to code in. Uh, I'm gonna make this larger so it's easier to see. So the way, first things first, you have to understand how to read code and understand where we're gonna be typing it because you can't just type it randomly and expect things to work. So basically what we do is we wanna type our code in between these squiggly brackets here. And this one here, and we can create more of these, what I like to refer to kind of as almost file folders, just because it's a little easier to understand that way. But these are called functions or methods. But basically, we want to be as organized as we possibly can when it comes to coding. Now, the one exception is we can declare variables, which are going to hold numerical values for us. And we can do that above all of this code, these code blocks, rather. So I'm going to start off by typing private float and then the word speed. And I'm gonna end that with a semicolon, which is basically saying this is where the code ends on this line. That's like a stop if you're sending a telegram. Not that any of us send telegrams these days, but if you were to send a telegram and say stop at the end, that would be like the semicolon here. It just indicates it's the end of the line. Uh, the word private means that this variable we're creating can only be used within this script, within this public class head. So if we create another script, we will not be able to access this variable. And float is a variable type. Uh, float just means uh, it's a de uh, bleh. float just means it's a decimal variable. And then we're going to say equals and give it an initial value of five. But because it's a float, we actually have to take the letter F after it in order for it to work. And one more thing, I'm actually going to not use private for uh, speed, but I'm going to change this to public. So it will be accessible outside, and will also be accessible in the inspector, and we'll get to that later. Next, we're going to actually see how we can use this speed variable to uh, basically create some code. I'm just going to open something here. There's one more uh, variable I'm going to actually create, and that's going to be public float move rate, and that is going to just be equal to 0.3f to start with. And so this, these two variables are going to handle our movement. Now, the way this works is we don't want to put most of our code within these two uh, code blocks, start and update. Start, everything that's written in here will execute once as soon as the program launches. And update, whatever's written in here, is going to re-execute every frame. We just basically want to use these two functions very minimally and to call other code. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type, create a new function here. I'm going to call it void move and open and close squiggly brackets. And from start, which is going to execute once at the start of the game, I'm going to call this void move. But I'm going to do this by using a piece of code called invoke repeating. And what this is going to do is it's going to call this uh, function move how multiple times at a rate that I specify. So what we're going to do is, in order to call this move, we're just going to type quotation mark move quotation mark comma, and now we're going to put this move rate variable in. And we're going to type it in a second time. And basically, the first time we're typing it in, we're telling it we want to call move after 0 0.3 seconds. And then the second time, we say we want to keep calling it again every 0 0.3 seconds. And now here within move, we can just say 
transform dot translate and we can say uh, speed and now if we save this script and go test it out and hit play we can see what happens uh, we're gonna see I first of all I have an error because transform translate actually requires a different type of variable in it it requires a vector 3 there we go so basically there's one more thing we have to do here and we have to give this uh, a direction that it's going to go in. And the way we can do that is by specifying up here private vector2 direction. And the way this works is a vector2 variable is basically like a float variable, only it contains two variables within it. It contains both an x and a y. Now, if we're going to use transform.translate, we need to be using either a vector2 for a 2D game or a vector3 for a 3D game. So in this case here, I'm just going to use a vector2 because this is 2D. And over here in start, I'm going to say direction equals vector2 dot right. So I'm giving it a direction here, and this is how you can do it. And now within this bracket, we're going to say direction times speed. And if we save and run this one more time, we should see that the snake moves to the right on its own. Now it's moving quite fast, and that's why I made these variables public, so we can actually play around with them. So a speed of 5 may actually be too fast. Let's just change that to 3 and see what happens. Okay, so that's a little better. Uh, in this case, though, the snake is actually still maybe a little big, so it's moving farther than I want it to and too quickly. So over here under textures, I'm just going to increase this uh, pixels per unit up maybe to 500. Make it a little smaller, see if I like that better. And this just requires some playing around with. So you're going to have to play around with these numbers on your own, especially if you're using a different set of sprites, and find some numbers that you're actually quite uh, happy with. Now, obviously this is not a smooth motion, but there we go, that, that's kind of more uh, what I want. But there is a reason that I'm doing it uh, this way, where it's not moving smoothly. And we'll get to that later when we start adding the tail. But, but for now, this kind of looks more or less like what I want. Uh, the snake is moving on its own. Obviously, we can't control its direction or anything yet. But it is moving on its own, which is a good start because that's what we want for this snake game. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.